Hi guys, uh, so I'm going to do it in lung dissection for you. Um, I want to do this just to make sure everyone got access to it because it's cool. Um, so I'm going to show you some lungs, show you what's inside of it, go through all the different structures and do a couple of little tests on it and hopefully you'll have a good time. Okay, so here we go. So here we have a set of lungs. So this is an actual set of lungs from a sheep i believe and um well as you can see they're you know they're a decent size now if you um sort of imagine these inside of a human we can hold them up we can sort of put them around about here i'm not going to put them any higher than that because i don't want to get sheep guts on me okay so they go about here um and inside of a human they'll be quite a bit bigger all right so different structures of the lungs so firstly you have the two lungs that is this bit here and we have this bit here okay if i have a look at this and you can't really tell very well but if i have a look at this it's nice and squidgy and squidgy flobs around a little bit and uh, actually works um it's very very spongy when you feel it we'll have a look at that in a minute um so the main pipes which come up here is this there's this tube now this tube here is your main um wind pipe and the wind pipe has got a special name which is called a trachea um and the trachea goes all the way from uh, the back of your throat all the way down to around about here um if you have a look at the the, uh, the trachea if you have a look at how um, it moves you see that it moves quite freely now we want it to move freely because you need to be able to move your neck you can't move your neck then you're going to have problems moving around you're going to not be able to turn from side to side look left or right look up or down or move at all so you want it to move around so let's just have a look at what the trachea is actually made of on the inside so if i just take all this off all this extra gubbins what you find Oops. is the trachea is made up of these, I don't know if you can see, of these um, sort of C-shaped rings. Now, these C-shaped rings are made from a substance called cartilage, and it's the same stuff that you have inside your nose, uh, which makes it sort of flexible, so as you can wiggle your nose backwards and forwards, it's that same sort of substance. And they are in little sections like this. I just pull this apart a little bit. Okay, so you have these sections of C-shaped cartilage. And what these do is they offer both flexibility and protection. Because you can see it can squish up a little bit. But it's also quite hard. I, can, I can't really pull that apart. Um, I can't crush it. I can bend it, but I can't crush it. And what that means is it means that your neck is flexible and it is able to protect you from being I don't know, hit in the throat. If you've ever been hit in the throat by like a football or something, you want it to be flexible so that your neck doesn't just snap. Okay, so those C-shaped cartilage rings go all the way down this trick here and it comes all the way from top down to here. Now, as we get down to here, this is where things start to branch off into different parts of lungs so if i try and remove some of this fat just try and get rid of this little bit here do, 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 do. um what happens is this trachea splits off into two tubes one which goes left one which goes right those tubes are called the bronchus they're a little bit difficult to see because of the fat, but if I just go in here, one of the tubes goes this way, which you can just about see. This is your trachea, splits off into here, it's going to the bronchus, and one of them goes into this side. All right? Now, when it splits out from those bronchus into the lungs, it splits off 
further into smaller and smaller tubes. And as it gets smaller and smaller, we, talk, we call them um, bronchioles. So some bronchioles are very, very small tubes. And these bronchioles will then lead to um, the, um, the structures in the lung called alveoli. And these are tiny little air pockets inside of the lung. So when I open this, these tiny little air pockets, what they do is they create this spongy texture on the inside. So unlike what some people might have expected, instead of having just a big open space, what you have instead is you have this spongy sort of texture where if I just squeeze this slightly, you can start to see some air bubbles forming and coming out of there, which you'll see a little bit better in a minute. But inside of here, there are microscopic little air pockets called alveoli, which is where our body will um, get all the gas exchange coming from. If you have a look at this here, this is one of those bronchioles that we were talking about. This is a tiny little tube, which will go up I even put this in here, it'll go up into the rest of the lungs and then eventually will come out up the top through the trachea. It all leads to the same place. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to inflate one of them. I'm going to try and inflate this one because it's the better one and we'll see how we do. So, here. Okay, all right. So the thing with the lungs is they have a, a brilliant ability to be able to expand. They've got lots of elastic tissue inside of there. So they're able to expand um, and therefore get more oxygen into uh, your body. So as I pump this up, you can see how it's able to expand quite considerably to what it was previously. So this is like breathing in and then this is breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Okay. So you can see how it expands quite nicely. Now what I can do again with this is I can cut um, open here. Very spongy. Okay, and again, if I squeeze this, you should see a lot more air coming out of it because I've just introduced a load of air into the lungs. If I blow it up again, it doesn't really blow up very well anymore, but what you should see is you should see the air coming out, maybe with a little bit of blood down at the bottom. Okay, so the lungs, oops, are very spongy. They have lots of air pockets inside called alveoli. And because they've got lots of those air pockets inside of it, if I was to get a piece of lung, put it in some water, it floats. So in a lung which has been removed from an animal, put in a freezer and defrosted, there is still enough air inside of it that it floats perfectly on top of the water. And even if I push down on it, it floats straight back up to the top. Okay, so that is a very brief tour of the lungs. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you didn't get too squeamish. And um, yeah, bye.